Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to be looking at the 2v2 Hellgate's Slingshot build. I know a lot of you guys are kind of wondering, you know, what is the build that is so devastating? Why is it able to just erase players and why are you not getting CC chained or, you know, what builds are you guys running to make this successful? Uh, today we're going to be looking at the 2v2 Hellgate Slingshot build. Uh, we're going to look into detail which each, what each ability does and why we run each and every ability. We're going to kind of explain ourselves uh, for you guys so you guys are able to run this successfully on your own. Um, but without further ado, let's get into the builds. All right, guys. So looking at uh, the kills we had here, uh, I just brought up two random kills of the people we killed and what gear we were actually running at the time. So right here, it uh, looks like I was running T6 gear for the slingshot build. Um, we do run 6-1 and 5-1 gear uh, with a 4-1 cape. And T8 pots and T7 pots because uh, we don't overcharge, uh, which is probably the nicest part about this build is we don't overcharge. So we were actually able to do about, you know, eight or ten runs in a row with just going back and forth from the Hellgate to our territory, allowing us to get an insane amount of money and fame. So we're going to go over the build real quick um, in game, actually. This was just to show you uh, my build on the blood letter. And now we're going to look at, this is Alf's build uh, on his quarter staff. So this is the builds that we like to run. Um, and it allows us to pretty much, like I said, not overcharge and take advantage of the fact that we have a territory right there that we're able to just bank and go right back without ever having to worry about going back. As long as we have the pots, as you can tell, he's running three pots and three porks. So we're going to be there for a while. Um, and that's pretty much how we played it. So... I'm going to go now into the marketplace here and kind of go over Alf's build first because his is going to be the one that I'm going to try to remember perfectly for you guys as it's the build that I don't actually run as he runs it, obviously. So uh, first, we're going to be looking at the cartwheel is, uh, I believe, what he is going to be running. He's going to be running that cartwheel, which is going to be able to uh, make your move speed increased by a crap ton uh, for a short distance. And then he's going to be running the stun run, which is going to make your next auto attack stun the enemy for basically three seconds, uh, which is very, very strong as it's very easy and automatically uh, you're going to hit that most of the time. I mean, you're not, you really can't mess that up. Um, and then we're going to have the separator, obviously. Uh, directly attacks a single enemy who becomes rooted for 5.32 seconds and takes 414 physical damage. Any other enemies in a 5 meter radius will be knocked in the air. Uh, for 0.9 seconds so that's going to be a strong separation uh, attack right there and then we're going to have every five normal attacks here attack stuns the enemy for 0.6 seconds uh, I believe that is going to be his build on the quarter staff he might be going dreadland fighting as well that does look pretty strong but I think he is actually going the stunning strike uh, to be honest with you I think he, he does prefer the stunning strike if I believe um, if I believe correctly here, um, but we're going to jump into the Royal Helm now uh, is what he's running up top and the Royal Helm. I don't know if you guys don't know already, but the Royal Helm is very strong as it has a ballista support fire, which actually stuns all enemies in the area for 3.15 seconds and deals some damage. Uh, the stun is delayed. Um, you know, when it comes down after you click, it comes down, you know, a couple seconds later. Or, you know, half a second or, you know, up to two seconds later. So I don't really know the exact timing on it as it doesn't really say in the uh, item or skill itself. But it takes a second to come down, basically. So he does run the Ballista uh, Support Fire on the Royal Helm. And he runs the Increase CC or Duration uh, ability right there. And then, obviously, with all the CC, he's going to be running a Demon Cape. Because the Demon Cape makes CC very overpowered. As he's going to be able to save his auto attack as I solo bosses and mobs. He's going to save his auto attack for when he comes in. He's going to do his first auto attack with the Demon Cape. And continue to do a lot of damage with the Opening to Hell ability on the Demon Cape. Um, as you can read there, it does a lot of damage over time. So, that's going to be a very strong part of this build. Make sure you're running that Demon Cape. Uh, you can just run a 5-1 or a 4-1, it's fine, uh, but just make sure you run that Demon Cape. And now we're going to look at his Stalker Jacket. Uh, this is going to be one of the same uh, gear pieces that I'm I'm going to be going uh, on most of the clips, you'll see. I do like going a double Stalker Jacket for this burst. Um, the electric field is very, very strong, dealing 63 damage twice per second to every enemy around you. The field lasts for 8 seconds. 
So really, you're doing <laughs> you're doing a lot of damage if you both have that activated and you're on top of them. Obviously, you're going to be doing AOE as well. So if their you know healer or their other DPS is in the area, he's going to want to move out of there, which is wasting more of his time. Uh, it's very 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 strong. Um, and then you know you can go really whatever you want. Maybe if you're going quarter staff, you want the attack speed so you can keep that stun up a little bit faster. Um, with I'm, I'm sure he actually does do the, the swiftness here to keep get his stun up faster, but it really doesn't matter. If you go damage and heal power, it's not going to uh, hurt you too bad, I'm, I'm sure, on that one. So uh, let's check, take a look at his shoes now. He's running the Hunter shoes. Uh, the reason for the Hunter shoes is the insane move speed that you'll see in the beginning of the clips where he goes in and I slingshot toward him. He's using his rush ability, which is on his Hunter shoes. The biggest part of this is the smooth speed and the duration on the crowd control abilities being increased by 35% for 3 seconds. That's going to make his stuns even stronger than they already are, uh, making it very hard for anybody to get out of the area before they're already dead. Um, and he'll probably be running Balanced Mind or, like I said before, Swiftness. Um, and now we're going to go look at his pots. Obviously, you already know the pots I showed you. He's running a Gigantify, a Gigantify pot. Uh, I believe it's a tier 7. Yeah, he's running a tier 7 Gigantify pot, which just makes you uh, increase your max load by 2,100%, which is kind of useless in this scenario, scenario but um, it's more about the max health by 108%, which is going to make him tankier for that time being if he gets in trouble. Um, and then he's going to be running that Pork Omelette uh, for cooldown reduction, and it's going to help him a lot with continuing the CC chain. Um, it's 13.5% for uh, 30 minutes, and I know you guys have probably used the pork comments before, so I probably shouldn't even be going over it, but for you guys that are new, uh, I'm going to go over every piece he has. So we also ran swift calls. Obviously, that's not important. Uh, we, we'd like to just get there, get there quick, and we have a pretty su high success rate, so we run swift calls. Um, but now we're going to go over my build, and I'm going to pop my build up here again for you guys. This is going to be my build. We're going to be going over it real quick here. Um, I go blood letter and the blood letter is pretty obvious on what you actually want to do. Uh, you're going to want to run and honestly, you could actually run the assassin spirit just fine here. I do run the Sunder armor and the assassin spirit would just be like a little bit of extra burst damage instead of damage, uh, that you can deal, uh, through throughout the, you know, attacking going on. Um, but I run a dash instead of the shadow's edge. Uh, there's really no reason to run a dash over Shadow's Edge. You could run either one. The reason I did it, we didn't need the damage. We actually, if anything, needed me to escape at the end because I was getting low at the very, very end, so we didn't want to go one for two. So I just go to the dash for the escape instead of the Shadow's Edge. But Shadow's Edge might do a little bit more stun lock, meaning less damage dealt to you. So, you know, you can get away with going either one, I'm sure. Uh, take your pick and use it. Um, down here we're going to be seeing a lunging stab. It's going to be kind of obvious. You're just going to make sure you use it at below 40% HP to get your big damage. Uh, down here I'm going to be doing the every four normal attacks. You inflict a bleeding on the enemy. This deals additional 50 per second for 1.5 seconds. And that's going to be the blood letter. Now we're going to be looking at the tap root. Uh, the tap root might be one of the strongest parts. I did do a 5-1 on the tap root because these do get a little bit costly. Um, right now it doesn't seem like they're actually too bad. It's only a, it's a little under 100k, um, but the 5-1 tap root you can see it gives you 444 HP, and HP regen is increased by 4.4 seconds, um, or not seconds, yeah, 4.4 HP per second, and the healing received is going to be reduced, and that's why you're not going to want to run it with another with a healer. You're not going to want want to run a uh, tap root with a healer on your side in twos for sure. Um, but in this situation where we're running double damage, it's actually perfect because we have the damage. I just need to stay alive in case they decide to burst one player as well. So it works perfectly for me. And the tap root is probably one of the strongest items uh, in the game in certain scenarios, uh, in my opinion. It can make a DPS tanky, and that's strong enough for me. So uh, we're going to look at the stalker jacket one more time for you guys. I know uh, we went over it with Al's build. It's going to be the exact same thing. You're going to want to go electric field, and then I run the balanced mind, um, and that's just going to be my stalker jacket build. And then, obviously, we're going to have the Hellion shoes, which kind of makes it the full throttle um, slingshot build. So actually, right now, this this is a very cheap Hellion shoes, uh, 6-1 for only 90 k but basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to run the Mark of Sacrifice, and that's going to be your invis. You're going to make sure you have them selected. Have who you want to 
be selected selected. I've made the mistake of teleporting to a mob before because I've had the mob selected instead of my teammate Alf uh, when he was running in. So make sure you have the right teammate selected and you're going to want to run a bounced mind as well um, with the Hellion shoes. So that is going to be my build. I do run T8 poisons. I'm not going to go over poisons. You guys know what those are. T8 poisons and I go a T8 beef stew for the extra damage on my uh, attacks. And I've thought about running a keeper cape, but I do not run a keeper cape. I actually run a, I'm going to show you guys a Thetford. It's actually, that's actually what I run. Um, I do like the Thetford cape. I run a 4-1, by the way. I don't go this expensive crap. Um, it doesn't change the damage enough uh, in my eyes to to make the a point of going a 6 cape. So, uh, yeah, I have a 4-1 Thetford cape that I run, and it does 186 damage up to 4 enemies. So, basically, it does 186 damage to both people right in the start. Uh, Keeper cape could also be good if you're both running it, uh, possibly. But you need the demon cape, so really you can't do it. Uh, the problem with the keeper cape is if they just don't attack you and attack your teammate, they're going to kill him. And before your keeper cape's even activated, um, you know your teammate's going to be dead on you. So what I like to do is run the Thetford for that little uh, boost of damage right in the beginning to make sure we get that initial burst. Because after the 40%, we have no problems with my blood letter of killing him. So we just need to make sure we get to that 40%, and Thetford, you know, kind of helps make that happen. So that's going to be the kind of the build we have for you guys today. Uh, with the slingshot build. I know a lot of you guys were kind of asking about. Hopefully that explained everything and I didn't miss anything. If you guys, oh, I almost missed one of the most important pieces. We're going to go back real quick and look at the night helm. Um, the reason I'm running a night helm instead of a mage cow or anything else is because of the displacement immunity. Uh, it increases your cow control resistances by 66 and makes targets and immune to any displacement effects like pulls, knockback. The spell affects you and up to five allies in a four meter meter radius. So when I hit my uh, F and start my slingshot toward Alf, once I get there, I instantly press or should. I don't know. Some clips I probably don't, but I should right away be clicking the displacement immunity as it will let us just charge straight through a fear and we will kill them in less than six seconds. So. Um, this is probably the strongest part of the build, honestly, is just being able to just run straight through their fear. I know fear is a huge thing in Tooth Fear, uh, because fear is, you know, one of the strongest abilities in the game as well. So this kind of counters fear and, uh, any other knockback or pulls. So make sure you do run a Night Helm. You're going to need that for sure. And I just run, uh, incoming damage is reduced by 2.439, I believe. So, uh, if you'd like, you could, you could, um, Maybe run the 5% increased CC duration if you're looking to run your W instead of a dash. Uh, you're looking to run the stun. But like I said, I would I would stick with toughness and make sure you run that displacement immunity. Um, but that will finally be all for this build guide for the slingshot uh, build. And I hope you guys do enjoy um, you know running this build. I loved it a lot. I, I did have a lot of fun running the slingshot build, and I'm sure we'll run it a few times after making the video but uh, once we make a video I like to try to find new builds and move on to something new uh, because I don't want to you know oversaturate uh, you know the build the build came out we showed you guys good clips of it we want to move on to the next you know next big thing uh, a lot of you guys will start running this build and you know it might take over the meta for a little bit uh, I know the great cursed and Drudic staff did for a little bit so uh, you know, if this takes over, I want to have another build ready to roll, ready to rock, and see what can counter it. So, uh, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Um, I'll see you guys next time.